Tyler Jones here. Appreciate you joining us here on NFL Daily as we're talking about Mel Kuyper Jr.'s latest big board of the top 25 players entering the 2024 NFL Draft. We will get through the entire list and tell you more about him, give you our reaction coming up in just a matter of moments. Before we do, I want to know, who is your favorite player in the draft this year? Not saying who the best player is, but who's your personal favorite? Let me know in the comments section and tell me who your favorite is when we get started with today's show. No surprise, Caleb Williams, the USC quarterback, is number one on Mel Kuyper's big board and has been the number one player the entire time. Mel said the following about Caleb Williams. He's incredible, escaping the pocket and making off-platform throws, excelling when he breaks down. His improvisational skills are off the charts, and it's incredible how he can make the first defender miss and create first downs out of thin air. He has great field vision and throws dimes to receivers while under duress. He's incredibly creative, which is not something we can usually say of quarterbacks. Now, when I look at Caleb Williams, the question for me is not anything to do with his talent level. I look at his playmaking abilities. He can make every single throw, does everything you can ask on that end. For me, it is looking at Caleb Williams with his heart and his character. We've seen some of the off the field stuff and how he reacted to adversity when this team was losing football games this past year. Uh, To me, that's the concern, is how he would be able to go into a locker room with grown men and carry himself. That's where I am concerned about Caleb Williams, because the numbers are just outstanding. No one's disputing what he can do with a football. 30 touchdowns, 5 picks, 11 rushing touchdowns. Caleb Williams can do it all. But can he be a leader in an NFL locker room? That remains to be seen. Should Caleb Williams be the number one overall pick? The Bears hold that pick right now. It could be traded. Should the Bears or somebody else take Caleb Williams with that number one pick, or should it be another player? Let us know in our pinned comment today. Why for yes and for no if Caleb Williams should be the top pick or not. Today's show is sponsored by Prize Picks. Prize Picks the place to go for daily fantasy made easy. Here's how it works. You choose two or more players in any given category. Get the choice of more or less. Whether you're talking fantasy points, passing yards, receiving yards, rushing yards, and more, you can mix and match different leagues, the NFL, the NBA, NHL, and more. This week with the AFC Championship game coming up on Sunday, I'm rolling with Justin Tucker to have more than one and a half field goals made. And Travis Kelsey, after a big game this past Sunday, to have more than 64 and a half receiving yards. Put $20 down, these hit turns into $60 on Price Picks. Get a $100 deposit match on your first entry when you play along with us. PricePicks.com slash CLNS. Promo code CLNS for a $100 deposit match. The link is in the comments and description of today's video. Number two on the list, Marvin Harrison Jr., the wide receiver out of the Ohio State, had a very good season, winning the majority of the top receiver awards in college football. And Kuyper said the following, Harrison has everything from outstanding size and stellar hands to incredible body control and blazing speed. His dad ran a 4.33 second 40-yard dash before the 1996 draft, but was just under six feet when the Colts took him in round one. Harrison Jr. is four inches taller and could have similar speed. Now, I can't find anything I don't like about Marvin Harrison Jr. He is one of the best prospects we've ever seen at this position. And while Caleb Williams, you have the character concerns, right? I think if you're trying to make the safe pick here, Marvin Harrison Jr. is as close of a sure thing to a sure thing you can get when I look at these guys picking uh, that are going to be available in those first few picks. This past season, over 1,200 yards, 14 touchdowns, 18 yards of reception. He was fantastic for Ohio State. Number three on the list, Drake May, quarterback out of North Carolina. Drake May got a lot of love this uh, past year, a lot of hype coming out. The talk was about him and Caleb Williams that they would have probably gone before any of the quarterbacks in either of the last two drafts with their talent level. Kuyper saying the following about Drake May. He looks the part of a big-time NFL signal collar. He can make every throw with ease. He's accurate on the move and can pick up first downs with his legs. May varies his pass speeds really well. He knows when to take a little off to make it easier for his receivers. Now, I look at Drake May, and the ability is there. No question about it. But there is a little bit of cleaning up to do. We saw at times that he did have some sloppy stuff going on. But he looks the part 
of a big-time quarterback in the National Football League. When you talk about his ability as a passer, the arm strength, the accuracy, uh, what he can do on the run, those little things are there, but some cleaning up to do, and some of those things take time. I mean, we've talked about Josh Allen for years now of still trying to clean up the sloppy stuff, but nobody disputes that Josh Allen is still the lead quarterback in this league. Another quarterback on the board, the Heisman Trophy winner, Jaden Daniels, out of LSU, is number four on Kuyper's list. And Kuyper saying the following about Jaden Daniels. Daniels, his rare ability as a dual-threat playmaker, he can evade, elude, and blow by defenders, but he also impressed with the way he can run through contact. But it's his improvement as a passer that has him looking like a round one selection. And Daniels, I think, took the big step up from about anybody on this draft board of where they were at at this time a year ago compared to where they're at now because of what he did to show his abilities as a passer and how accurate he was. But the question then is going to become, LSU had one of the best receiving cores in all of college football with Neighbors and Thomas, two guys we're going to talk about in a second. Was Daniels a byproduct of having great receiver talent? I think that's a fair question to ask because you look at these numbers, 40 touchdowns, 3,800 yards, 10 rushing touchdowns, over 1,100 yards, that big step up. Was that going to be something that stays? Is that who Jaden Daniels really is, or does it reflect of who he played alongside? It's a fair question to ask. Who's the best quarterback in this draft? Is it Caleb Williams? Is it Drake May? Or is it Jaden Daniels? Type C for Caleb Williams. Type D for Drake May. Type J for Jaden Daniels. Which quarterback do you think is the best quarterback? Let me know. Number five on our list is a Washington wide receiver, Rome Odunze, who was spectacular this season, and his numbers were actually better than Marvin Harrison Jr.'s were this past season with the Washington Huskies. Kuyper saying the following, Odunze put up four straight 100-yard receiving games to begin the season, and I love his combination of size and speed. He's big, and he knows how to use his body to shield defenders. He used both inside and out. He can make defensive backs miss after the catch. Now, I look at Odunze, and I see a player that looks wise beyond his years. You see how smart of a route runner he is and his ability to get down the football field. To me, this is somebody with a very good football IQ. And We talk a lot about receivers being immature, right? That's not the case with Romo Odunze. He's a natural leader and a very smart football player. Whoever drafts Romo Odunze is going to get uh, a great pick wherever he goes. Another wide receiver. We mentioned his teammate a moment ago. Malik Neighbors, wide receiver from LSU, is next on our list. Neighbors uh, had a fantastic season. Joe Alt, offensive tackle from Notre Dame, is the first offensive lineman on Kuiper's list at number seven. And then at number eight, that is where we find the best tight end we've seen in a very long time. Georgia tight end Brock Bowers with the number eight slot. Kuiper saying the following about Bowser. He's a matchup nightmare for defenses. He has great hand-eye coordination and run-after catchability, and he can stretch the field down the seams. I also love the way he tracks the ball, high-pointing it above defenders. We've been patiently waiting for when Brock was going to become draft eligible. He's been the best tight end in college football for the last three years now, and I think he's in the conversation for one of the best tight end prospects we've ever seen. And he draws all the comparisons. You're going to hear people talk about Travis Kelsey, Rob Gronkowski, all those great tight ends with the receiving ability that he brings, at times looking like a wide receiver. This past year, played in 10 games, had the ankle injury, was able to come back, though. 56 catches, 714 yards, 13 yards of reception, six touchdowns. Another good year for him despite the injury. Then uh, we find Olu or offensive tackle for Penn State with the number nine spot. Number 10, Dallas Turner, uh, outside linebacker from Alabama, enters this list as well. We'll get to 11 through 25 in just one moment. But first, I want to make sure you subscribe to NFL Daily by Chat Sports for the best coverage leading up to the NFL Draft. Nobody is going to be covering the draft like we are here at NFL Daily. We're going to be bringing you mock drafts. We're going to keep you updated on potential trades. We're going to send a team out to the Combine to cover that as well. Keep it locked in to NFL Daily. We'll have you covered all the way up until the draft right here on the channel. Subscribe now for free. You'll be glad you did. The other LSU receiver, that is Brian Thomas Jr., falls in at the number 11 spot. Well, number 12 is Cooper DeJean, 
the corner from Iowa, and there may be something you notice about Cooper DeJean at the corner position. We'll get to that here in just a second, the elephant in the room. I was impressed with his technique on snap-to-snap basis, says Mel Kuyper. He played in the SWAT and out wide, showing off tremendous speed to stick to receivers. He's just silky as a cover man. This is everyone's favorite white corner we've ever seen (laughs) in quite some time. And if he could come back from the leg injury just fine, I know there's some concerns about that, about that leg injury he endured this past year. But the numbers that we saw before that were so good, Cooper DeJean is going to be a natural fit in the National Football League. This year, two interceptions and 10 games played, 41 tackles, two tackles for loss. Um, the, The... People like Cooper DeJean don't come around every day. We haven't seen a white corner in the NFL since Jason Seahorn. So uh, certainly drawing some attention. And there's already rumblings. He might even move to safety potentially at the next level. 13, Keon Coleman, wide receiver from Florida State. Straight up dog, folks. Awesome guy. Uh, I think there's potential for him to maybe move up the boards here in the next few weeks. 14, Nate Wiggins, corner from Clemson. 15, Troy Fanatu, the offensive guard from the University of Washington. Then, at number 16, Leotu Latu, the outside linebacker from UCLA, followed by another fellow Pac-12 player, that is Michael Penix Jr., the quarterback from Washington. Penix played in the national championship game for the Huskies and led them to a Pac-12 title, certainly a name that has risen up boards over the last several months. Kuyper say the following about Penix. When you study the tape, you see he has the arm talent, accuracy to all levels, decision-making, and toughness to become a successful starting quarterback in the NFL. Now, there are some people that are worried about him being a lefty. I'm not concerned about that with Michael Penix Jr. What I am concerned about is if he can stay healthy. He's already had a couple of ACL injuries. And kind of like we talked about with Jaden Daniels, another fair question to bring up, is he a byproduct of having great receiver talent? Washington had the best one of the best receiver rooms in all of college football this year. And Penix's numbers were outstanding. 36 touchdowns, 11 interceptions. What can he do if he doesn't have all those weapons there? Uh, that's a question I think a lot of people want to know when it comes to Penix Jr. there. So, how many quarterbacks will be selected in the first round of this year's draft? Already talked about several. This is believed to be a generational year for QB talent. Weigh in, tell us what you think in the comments section. Jared Verse, another guy I like a lot in this draft. He comes in at number 18, defensive end from Florida State. Uh, Could be a guy that I think if he impresses well, the combine might move into the top 10. Uh, Number 19, offensive tackle from Oregon State, Talisi Fuega gets the spot. Well, number 20 belongs to offensive tackle J.C. Latham from Alabama. 21, we find Devontre Sweat, the defensive tackle from Texas, and I got to tell you, this guy is quite the willy mammoth, if I'd say so myself. Listen to this. Kuyper saying the following, I've been impressed with Sweat's improvement this season as he has shown he's more than a plugger along the interior of the defensive line. He has put some excellent pass rush moves on tape, and he's a disruptive force in run and pass situations. I personally love the idea of a 6'4", 362-pound defensive lineman. That's not attractive to everybody, but Sweat... Well, no pun intended, but he's shown that he can break a sweat, that he is very athletic for his size, that he is a disruptor. This past season took on a lot of double teams and yet still managed to have 45 tackles, eight tackles for loss, two sacks, and four pass breakups. Watch out to see what he could do at the next level. A few more names to get to. Amarius Mims, offensive tackle from Georgia at 22. From the University of Oklahoma, Tyler Guyton. This guy's a big dude, 6'7". He falls in at number 23. Number 24, defensive tackle Jerzon Newton from Illinois. And rounding out Kuyper's big board at 25 is Jordan Morgan, the offensive tackle from Arizona. Appreciate you joining us here on this edition of NFL Daily. If you enjoyed today's show, you made it to the end, spam real one in the comments section. We'd certainly appreciate it, and we'll see you next time here on the channel.